Namaste to all my lovely uh, friends and all the great prestigious doctors of this country. So today, let's have a round of 25 most important questions. Uh, what I have tried to do is, I have tried to include the most relevant topics, what I believe that uh, these topics are really going to be very, very important for the upcoming FMG exam. And the examiner might be framing questions Maybe the languages, the options might change, but yes, uh, the, the, these topics uh, should be common. A lovely good evening to all of you, Bita Afzal, Shubham, Mohit, uh, Vaxi, Jayendra, Jaivir, Rudra, wonderful. So lovely good evening to all of you, Bita. And uh, uh, let's uh, take a look at these questions. What I have tried to do is uh, I have included the pediatric surgery, the adult surgery, the onco surgery, the trauma section, the vascular and the endocrine section in these 25 most important question series. We believe that uh, one question should be there from any of the uh, four or five topics which are commonly seen in babies from the head and neck area, which include the cleft lip palate, the thyroglossal cyst, the branchial cyst, the cystic hygroma, and the esophageal atresia the thoracic area, right? So out of these uh, various topics in the upcoming exam, maybe esophageal atresia should be a hot topic. Pranam everyone, Bita. Let us uh, see how we are going to solve these questions. Let us quickly remind ourselves that what is the art of solving the image-based questions. So Bita ji, herein, what we are seeing, this is a X-ray, looks to be a small baby, and an important thing in this X-ray is we are seeing that there is some tube type of thing which is arrested here in the upper part. And the very interesting finding what we are seeing in this is there is no gas shadow seen in the abdomen. Right, Bita. So, Akila, as you rightly mentioned, this is a case of esophageal atresia because this X-ray, yes, everyone, uh, you have seen uh, this X-ray a number of times and it's really an honor for me uh, to congratulate all of you that uh, you would be able to identify this uh, particular pathology in the X-ray. Very good. So looks to be esophageal atresia. Now let us take a look at the options, uh, right? So the given option says that type C is the commonest type for this pathology out of various five types. Yes, a reason for gasless abdomen is non-communication of trachea with the lower esophagus. That means why we are not able to see gas in the abdomen is because the trachea is not connected with the lower esophagus. Whether the statement is true or not, let's see. <clears throat> okay, fine. Uh, stomach is falsely absent in this pathology. Yes, actually stomach is present, but when we are looking at the X-ray, because we are not able to see any gas in the stomach, we feel that stomach is falsely absent. So this is also a true statement. That means uh, the first three statements looks to be true. Ideally, this pathology should be surgically treated as early as possible after birth. Okay. Right. So this also looks to be a true statement. Type C is the commonest type. Yes, reason for gasless abdomen is non-communication of trachea with the lower esophagus. Stomach is falsely absent. Uh, and ideally, this pathology should be surgically treated as early as possible after birth. Okay, right. So basically, uh, all the four options to me looks to be absolutely correct. Uh, let me just read the question first. Uh, before I mark the answer, let me read the last line of the question, Bita. What is the correct statement? So we have to identify what is the correct statement. You are the resident doctor posted in OBG department. You have taken the delivery of a full-term baby. The baby is frothing saliva from the mouth. X-ray shows gasless abdomen as seen in the image. Okay, let us quickly take a look. Yes, Rajendra. So all four looks to be absolutely correct, right? Let's take a look. What is this esophageal atresia all about? The commonest type of esophageal atresia is something like this, what we are seeing here, where the upper esophagus is blind and the lower esophagus is connected to the trachea, 
ओके एक्चुअली स्पीकिंग बेटा देर आर फाइव टाइप्स ऑफ इस ऑफेज लिटरेसी एज यू कैन सी टाइप वन वेन बोथ अपर एंड लोअर एंड ऑफ इस ऑफेगस आर ब्लाइंड एंड देर इज नो कनेक्शन विद द ट्रेकिया Type two, where the upper esophagus is connected to the trachea, while the lower esophagus is blind. Type three, which is the most common type, where the upper esophagus is blind and the lower esophagus is connected to the trachea. Type four, when both upper and lower esophagus are connected to trachea. And type five is not esophageal atresia. Actually, it is just a fistula, just a isolated tracheoesophageal fistula. That is also a H type, or you can say a type E type of esophageal atresia. Right? Okay. so now one thing in the given image when we will be seeing gas in the stomach gas from the mouth can go into the stomach through the esophagus if the entire esophagus is patent right or if the entire esophagus is not patent but if there is any connection of trachea with the lower esophagus then the tracheal gas can go into the lower esophagus and into the stomach तो बेटा जी ध्यान रखना है हमें पेट में गैस कब दिखेगी या तो इसोफेगस का पूरा का पूरा रास्ता ठीक ठाक है तो जो अपन मुंह से गैस हवा ले रहे हैं वो स्टमक में जाएगी अगर बाय चांस इसोफेगस का रास्ता पेटेड नहीं है तो जो ट्रेकिया में हवा जा रही है अगर ट्रेकिया का कोई भी रिश्ता नीचे वाले इसोफेगस के साथ है तो ट्रेकिया की हवा नीचे वाले इसोफेगस से स्टमक में जाएगी right okay beta now in the given types this particular type there is no connection of the lower esophagus no connection of the lower esophagus that means in type 1 and type 2 we will not be seeing gas in the stomach and in these type we can say that stomach is falsely absent and that is why beta what we are seeing this image we are not able to see any gas in the stomach or in the abdomen so type 1 type 2 esophageal atresia there will be gasless abdomen but if you look at the other types beta g type 3 type 4 and type 5 to abhi gas will be there in the stomach gas will be there in the stomach and gas will be there inside the stomach okay right okay uh ishmeet beta there is a difference uh in majority of the questions right there are uh, different uh, questions except uh, four or five questions uh, would be the same right okay so now what is the correct statement for this except okay so he is asking what is except type c is the commonest type absolutely true reason for gasless non connection of trachea with the lower esophagus yes stomach is falsely absent yes ideally this pathology should be repaired surgic should be surgically treated as early as possible yes this is also correct that means if all the four options are correct then we have to just try to find out some words which may make one of the option a little incorrect for example out of these given option if i focus on this should be treated as early as possible after birth generally we repair this pathology at day 1 or day 2 of life only okay so this statement also holds true but if i have to rule out any one option then it is not immediately it is not that the baby is born and we take the baby to the operation theater we might have to wait for a day or maybe two days or sometimes three to four days and then we take right so better answer out of these would be d right okay now moving on to the other question now which of the following would be the best to diagnose a pathology having heterotopic epithelium heterotopic gastric epithelium yes beta now who will tell me mayank monali shobham harsh sohel yes sohel we can wait for 4 to 6 weeks especially when the two ends of esophagus are not close to each other right so at that point of time we can wait okay this congenital anomaly present since birth 
and it is the representation of persistence of intestinal end of vitello intestinal duct. Because Harikant, uh, why not A? Eh? Because they are saying type C is the commonest type of pathology, right? Type C is the commonest type of uh, various types amongst the five types. That is why that, that is the absolutely correct statement. Yes, Kartavyam, you are absolutely right. So, Meikle's diverticula is the story. It is uh, persistence of intestinal end of vitello intestinal duct, right? And he has also mentioned heterotopic gastric epithelium is present in this. And he is asking which investigation would be the best. So, Beta ji, indirectly, if you make it a single liner question, we have to find out best investigation for Meikle's diverticula, right? Okay. Lovely. Yukta, Kaushal, Polak, everyone, Mayank, Sagar, Sonkate, Chirag, you are absolutely correct. Okay. Right. So, it should be a radioisotope scan. Let us quickly have a look at uh, Meikle's basically. So, just to remind all of you beta, because this is an important area from where anatomy questions are also picked up. During intrauterine life, suppose beta, if you look at this, the brown colored thing, what we are seeing is the intestine, suppose, and the blue colored thing below is the bladder. Right now, all of you are watching this session beta, there is no connection of your intestine or bladder with the umbilicus. But when we were during our intrauterine life, there was a connection of the umbilicus with the intestine, which was the vitello intestinal duct. There was a connection of the umbilicus with the bladder, which was allantois. And these vitello intestinal duct allantois, they obliterate before birth. So after birth, we are like this. But by chance beta, if somebody has done bad deeds in his previous life, and if suppose, this connection of umbilicus with the intestine persists even after birth. Then intestinal contents will start coming out from the baby's umbilicus and that is called as a abnormal relationship between two people. Kya bolte bita usko? Fistula. So umbilical fecal fistula. If suppose allantoin does not involute even after birth, then urine will come from the umbilicus. This is umbilical urinary fistula. If suppose only the umbilical end of the vitello intestinal duct or the allantois persist, mucus will come out from the baby's umbilicus, that is umbilical sinus. If intestinal end of vitello intestinal duct persists even after birth, this is mecals. If vesicle end of allantois persists after birth, this is congenital urinary bladder diverticula. Okay, so he is talking about a mecals. And we should know better some important points about Meikle's. Meikle's is something like this, as you can see here. It is on the anti-mesentric border, follows the rule of 2, 2% 2 population, 2 cm wide, 2 inches long, 2 feet proximal to ileocecal junction. And most common heterotopic epithelium found is gastric epithelium. However, pancreatic and colonic epithelium can also be seen in Meikle's. Right. Now, if we look at the investigations which are possible, Meikle scan or the radioisotope scan, that is technetium per technetid scan, is the best investigation which reveals the site of Meikle's. If we look at this, this isotope, the black shadow what we are seeing, this isotope is taken by the gastric epithelium. So we are able to see the black shadow in the epigastric area to highlight the stomach and we are also able to see a black shadow in the lower abdomen. That means gastric epithelium is present in the lower abdomen also. So it would be a case of Meikle's. That is why we are seeing this, right? So Meikle scan, that is the best investigation though we can also do a barium meal follow through. We can do a video capsule endoscopy. Only thing is we avoid doing a CCT because this is a small baby, right? So let's take a look what all options are given by the examiner, which is the best we have to identify, video capsule, CCT, technetium and barium meal. So all of you are absolutely correct. The correct answer goes in favor of technetium per technetate scan. Perfect, very good. Right, beta. So, dhyan rakhenge ki Meikle's is going to be a hot topic for our upcoming exam. And uh, as I always say, that you all have been great fighters. You all have successfully completed your graduation, despite fighting out all the challenges 
you have fought with climate, education, language, and the weather, right? Climate, weather, education, language, food. So when you can fight out with those challenges, now we are just left with 37 days bitter, right? Just keep reminding yourself of the challenges, what you have fought in your six years, just 37 days to go. And all those pains, what you have taken, all those will be rewarded when you will be wearing that prestigious white coat and the stethoscope in the hospitals in April 2024. And take my words, Pita, if we keep on believing in ourselves, right? We are braver than what we think. We are more talented than what we know about us. And we are capable of doing much, much, much more than what we can imagine. That means nobody on this earth has the power to stop you from cracking a big, big score in the upcoming FMG exam. Just keep on believing in yourself. Apne upar bita, pura vishwas rakke, roz nirantar mehnat karte raho. Right? Jo che saal, apan ne challenges se fight kiya na bita, us kyun fight kiya? Kyunki humne kuch sapne dekhe hai. और उन सपनों को साकार करने का वक्त आ गया बेटा सिर्फ 37 डेज अगर इन 37 डेज में हम अपनी पूरी जी जान से मेहनत कर ले तो दुनिया की कोई भी ताकत हमको हरा नहीं पाएगी और यही हम चाहते हैं कि आप सब पूरी हिम्मत से चाहे जितना मर्जी मन में नेगेटिव थॉट्स आने की कोशिश करें कि ये नहीं हो रहा कैसे होगा डोंट वरी अबाउट इट बस जिस प्रोसेस पे हम फोकस कर रहे हैं उस प्रोसेस को निरंतर हमें मेहनत करके अच्छा करते जाना है राइट बेटा सो लेट्स मूव टू अनदर क्वेश्चन इन पीडियाट्रिक सर्जरी हियर अगेन द हॉट टॉपिक फॉर द अपकमिंग एग्जाम कैन बी undescended testis area so let's have a question on this looks to be a lengthy question and we know what is the art of solving the lengthy question beta right we have to read the last line of the question, look at the options, and then we have to read the stem of the question. Okay, so herein, let's read the last line. Which of the following is true? So, beta, kya sahi hai? Ye hume dekhna hai. Let's see the options. Orchidopexy for undescended testis is best done between 6 to 18 months of age. Bilkul sahi baat hai. There is a controversy, beta. Earlier, the answer for this question was six months. Na? Pehle six months bolte te. Six months to 12 months. Even now, look at me. Even now, the standard textbook of surgery says that six to 18 months is the ideal age. In the same new edition of Billy and Love, at one page, it is written that Orchidopexy should be done between 6 to 12 months of age. So the same Bailey and Love is giving two different answers. But where the topic where they have mentioned undescended testes in detail, they have mentioned 6 to 18 months. Okay. So for us, now the standard dictum is 6 to 18 months. That is the best answer. Right? Right, Peter. Another option here is gold standard diagnostic tool for non-palpable testis is ultrasound of the abdomen. No, beta. In undescended testis, if by chance we are not able to feel the testis or see the testis, generally kya hota beta? Undescended testis mein, jab apan bachche ko examine karte na, to apan testis ko feel kar paate. Generally, we are able to feel the testis on clinical examination, maybe. Uh, located high up in the scrotum or maybe in the inguinal canal. Lekin, if we are not able to see or feel the testis clinically, testis may be lying behind the inguinal canal, maybe just behind the deep inguinal ring. And in these cases, diagnostic laparoscopy is the gold standard investigation, right? I repeat, for non-palpable testis, diagnostic laparoscopy is the gold standard investigation. Okay, fine. So, 
it is not ultrasound actually it should be diagnostic laparoscopy okay testes that are absent from the scrotum will have a chance to descend down to the bottom of the scrotum up to puberty uh, this statement is also wrong beta because it is not puberty story it is three month story undescended testes may generally the incidence of undescended testes in a full term baby is 3%, 3 to 4%, okay? And suppose 100 male babies are born in the city where you are living today. Out of these 100, 3 or 4 male babies will be having undescended testis. And beta G, out of these 3 or 4 babies, 75% of the babies, the testis will descend down to the bottom of the scrotum within 3 months of life. तीन महीने के अंदर जो टेस्टेस अंडरसेंडेड है, वो अपने आप नीचे स्क्रोटम तक आ सकती है, राइट? इट इज़ नॉट प्यूबर्टी बेटा, इट इज़ थ्री मंथ्स, ओके? सो हियर वी हैव टू बी केयरफुल, राइट? यस बेटा मधुमिता मोस्ट कॉमन साइट ऑफ अंडरसेंडेड टेस्टेस इज़ हाई अप इन दिस स्क्रोटम, इट इज़ नॉट इ Please note, let me write this also for all of those who are watching this. Most common site for undescended testes. Now it is high up in the scrotum. Okay. Please do make a correction. Yes. Commonest malignancy developing in undescended testis is non-seminomatous germ cell tumor. No, beta. It is not non-seminomatous. It is actually seminomatous. As uh, somebody rightly said here, that most common malignancy developing in undescended testis is a seminoma. Right? So, it is seminoma. And beta G, just to remind all of you that commonest cause of testicular cancer is undescended testis. Commonest cause of testicular cancer is undescended testis right beta so this is how we can exclude the other three options that is why the correct answer is orchidopexy for undescended testis is best done between six surgery stories let us see in the adult surgery fine it uh, looks to be a small question so let us start with the question 70 year old and beta my sincere request with folded hands to all of you whenever age of the patient is given in the question now please do not ignore this there has to be some logic behind giving age of the patient okay be careful 70 year old rich man had huge amount of alcohol in a party following which he presented with hematomasis in the emergency yes Veda. let us see he is non-hypertensive does not have any pre-existing liver disease. What is the most likely explanation for this type of presentation? Options are Mallory-Weiss, Borhavi, Varicial Bleed and Peptic Ulcer Disease. Wait, 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 Madhumita, Lovke, Shobham, Bhanus, Srivashini, Kuldeep, Devshil, Ashwin, Shankar, Ruko Beta, Ruko, Ravis, Ruko, this is not uh, the same question what you are thinking of. Smriti had, had this right. Mayank, Paras, Chirag, Moinuddin. Dishu, Smriti, Pawan, Ashi, Shema. Perfect, beta, perfect. Let's have a big round of applause for all of you. Yukta and ISM Bishkek, you are saying very shall bleed. Uh, because again, Wonderful beta. So now, now you would have already realized that where, where we were going wrong. We know that this is an important area for our exam. Okay. So let us try to just segregate all these things so that we do not commit any mistake in the upcoming exam beta. Dhyan se dekhna hai. Galti hui na beta. Choti si silly mistake hua na yaha pe. To ye kyon hua silly mistake? Kyunki humne jald bazi mein isko read kiya. और हमारे अंदर preoccupied thoughts थे कि ऐसा ही question तो हम बार-बार करते आ रहे हैं, 
अभी अभी रिसेंटली तो हमने ऐसा क्वेश्चन किया इसलिए हमने क्वेश्चन को ध्यान से नहीं पढ़ा और हमसे गलती हुई अब हमें क्या करना है बेटा हमें इन सिली मिस्टेक्स को भी इम्प्रूव करना है वी जस्ट नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड कि एग्जामिनर इज गोइंग टू चेंज द की वर्ड्स वॉट एवर वी आर डिस्कसिंग राइट नाउ द एग्जामिनर विल बी चेंजिंग द की वर्ड्स इन द क्वेश्चन एज वेल एज द ऑप्शन राइट एंड ही वुड बी प्लेइंग अराउंड दिस सो जस्ट बी केयरफुल बेटू जी प्लीज प्लीज बी केयरफुल हाँ ओके बेटा सो हियर इन मेलोरी वी स्टीयर Now, what is Mallory V steer, beta? Quickly, let us just try to understand. This is a longitudinal mucosal tear at the gastroesophageal junction, and this is associated with binge drinking or heavy meals, binge eating or binge drinking. When there is sudden forceful vomiting, na beta? Achanak se agar zoro se vomit hua. क्योंकि स्टमक में प्रेशर बढ़ गया था ज्यादा खाने पीने की वजह से तो देर कैन बी टीयर एट द गेस्ट्रोइोफेजल जंक्शन इन द म्यूकोसा अगर म्यूकोसा टूटी है तो ब्लीड करेगी इफ द म्यूकोसा ब्रेक्स इट विल ब्लीड एंड पेशेंट विल प्रेजेंट विथ हिमाटमैसिस तो अगर हिमाटमैसिस बोल रहा है तो दिस इज गोइंग इन मेलोरी वीज फेवर अगर मान लीजिए द सेम स्टोरी इज देयर से बिंज ड्रिंकिंग बिंज ईटिंग फोर्सफुल वॉमिटिंग ऐसी स्टोरी है बट साथ में ही सेंग चेस्ट पेन नाउ दिस इज बिकॉज ऑफ ईसोफेजियल रपच्चर वेन एवर देर इज फोर्सफुल वॉमिटिंग सडन हाई प्रेशर इन द ईसोफेगस रपचर्स द ईसोफेगस सो ऑल द गेस्ट्रिक कंटेंट विल लीक इन टू द मीडास्टेनम एंड कैन कॉज मीडास्टेनाइटिस राइट बेटा ओके सो अगर चेस्ट पेन लिखता है ऐसी हिस्ट्री के साथ तो इट गोज इन फेवर ऑफ बोरहावी वेरिशियल ब्लीड के लिए क्या कीवर्ड देगा वहां पे वेरिशियल बेटा ईसोफेजल वेरियसिस दीज आर एबनॉर्मली डायलेटेड टॉर्चुअस वेन स्पेशली इन द लोअर ईसोफेगस इन रिलेशन टू द पोर्टल वेन अभी दिस इज जनरली सीन वेन द पोर्टल वीनस प्रेशर इज हाई मे बी क्रॉनिक लिवर डिजीज मे बी एल्कोहलिक लिवर डिजीज और सिरोसिस टाइप ऑफ स्टोरी सो क्रॉनिक एल्कोहलिक स्टोरी अगर बोलता है या मान लीजिए कोई पोर्टल हाइपर टेंशन रिलेटेड स्टोरी बोलता है या क्रॉनिक लिवर डिजीज करके बोलता है और साथ में हिमाटमैसिस बोलता है देन दी आंसर यस एस पी जी यू आर एब्सोल्यूटली करेक्ट हेम एन साइन एस सीन एन बोर हावी सिंड्रोम तो यहां पे दिस विल गो इन फेवर ऑफ वेरिशियल ब्लीड और अगर मान लीजिए वो कोई पेप्टिक अल्सर से रिलेटेड स्टोरी देता है जैसे कॉमनेस्ट कॉज ऑफ पेप्टिक अल्सर इज एच पाइलोराई है ना अगर एच पाइलोराई की कोई स्टोरी दे रहा है मान लो स्मोकिंग की स्टोरी दे रहा है या नॉन स्टेरॉयडल एंटी इन्फ्लेमेटरी ड्रग्स एस्पिरिन की स्टोरी दे रहा है एंड देर इज नो स्टोरी ऑफ सडन हैवी ड्रिंकिंग और हैवी ईटिंग फोर्सफुल वॉमिटिंग ऐसी कोई स्टोरी नहीं है क्रॉनिक लेवर डिजीज की भी स्टोरी नहीं है बट हिमाटमैसिस है तो वी शुड नो बेटा दैट कॉमनेस्ट कॉज ऑफ हिमाटमैसिस इज पेप्टिक अल्सर एंड इन पेप्टिक अल्सर ड्यूडनल अल्सर ब्लीड मच मच मोर कॉमनली राइट बेटा संभाल लोगे बेटा इस टाइप के क्वेश्चन को एग्जाम में यस ओके चिराग देर इज नो हिमाटमैसिस इन बोरहावी नो बेटा चिराग देर इज नो हिमाटमैसिस इन बोरहावी इट इज चेस्ट पेन स्टोरी इन बोरहावी राइट दीप्ति वेरी गुड बेटा सो इन द गिवन क्वेश्चन अगर अपन देखते हैं सेवेंटी ईयर ओल्ड है ह्यूज अमाउंट ऑफ एल्कोहल है मतलब बिंज ड्रिंकिंग की बात कर रहा है एंड हिमाटमैसिस की बात कर रहा है सो दिस गोज इन फेवर ऑफ मेलोरीवीज राइट लव इट वेरी गुड गॉड ब्लेस यू बेटा गॉड ब्लेस यू स्मृति थैंक यू वेरी मच बेटा this this would be a question where the examiner might be playing around right thank you so much chale beta aage chalte okay 36 year old lady from kyrgyzstan okay so i am bishkek was uh, one person who was here a 36 year old lady from kyrgyzstan having 225 kg body weight came to india for weight reduction surgery and underwent ru and y gastric bypass surgery which of the following would be least useful 
टू दिस पेशेंट इन द पोस्ट ऑपरेटिव पीरियड लीस्ट बताना बेटा कंसिडरिंग द पॉसिबल कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ दिस सर्जरी ओके वेरी गुड वेरी गुड यस सुनिधि यस अंकि चिकन सिक्सटी फाइव चिकन सिक्सटी टू वेरी गुड यू रिमेंबर ऑल द स्टोरीज परफेक्ट लेट सी ललित लेट सी ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट बेसिकली अ रू एंड वाई गेस्टिक बाईपास दैट मीन्स ही वुड बी टॉकिंग अबाउट अ सर्जरी समथिंग लाइक दिस वेयर इन द स्टमक हैज बीन कनेक्टेड विद द जेजनम सो वॉट कैन बी द पॉसिबल कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ दिस टाइप ऑफ सर्जरी वन इज अ डम्पिंग सिंड्रो let me put the question again so that you can read this question nicely basically uh there can be duodenal stump blot which usually occurs on fourth post operative day very important is the dumping syndrome or the post sibel syndrome which can be early dumping or late dumping early dumping starts immediately after meals within 5 to 10 or 20 minutes after meals and this is because when high osmotic load goes into the jejunum suddenly right because in this ru and y surgery mhm mm rahul vidhi pramod himanshu santosh shankar vibhuti yes very good very good good doctor mbbs uh, game over c perfect absolutely correct right beta so here in uh, basically the complications of this true and wise surgery one is a duodenal stump blow out this generally blows out on fourth post operative day then dumping syndrome early dumping is because suddenly the food is dumped into the jejunum high osmotic load fluid shift from the peripheries bloating epigastric pain peripheries become cold and this continues for maybe 30 60 minutes and then gradually start settling down late dumping occurs in the second hour after meals because of sudden absorption of more amount of glucose into the blood there will be more insulin secretion by the pancreas excess insulin is secreted so whatever insulin was required to deposit this glucose will be used the excess insulin will cause hypoglycemic symptoms in the second hour after meals this is late dumping syndrome dumping 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 this is important for the exams okay apart from this there can be post begotme diarrhea nutritional deficiencies like because you can see the food is going directly into the jejunum it is not going into the duodenum and iron absorption mainly occurs in the duodenum so patient will suffer from iron deficiency because we have chopped significant portion of the stomach so intrinsic factor will not be produced and vitamin b12 absorption will not occur from the gi tract so vitamin b12 deficiencies will be there calcium phosphorus deficiencies will be there there can be gallstones formation there can be gastric cancer developing in the residual stomach because there is no pylorus so jejunal alkaline contents will reflux into the stomach will cause alkaline gastritis or reflux gastritis intestinal metaplasia and gastric cancer right beta now let us take a look least useful advice to treat dumping syndrome we know that we have to give small frequent meals we avoid giving carbohydrate rich food we prefer giving high protein and fat diet but small frequent because a bulky meal will cause more dumping complications so this statement is correct iron injections as per serum levels of iron and ferritin definitely because the patient will be having iron deficiency and even oral supplementation of iron will not not help because even if you are giving this iron tablet the iron tablet will be going suppose i say that this is the iron tablet here iron tablet will be going into the jejunum so iron tablet is not going into the duodenum if iron tablet is not going into the duodenum how will the iron be absorbed so patient will be uh, having iron deficiency and that is why we have to give iron injections many a times to these uh, patients 
नॉन वेजिटेरियन डाइट टू रिप्लेरिश द वाइटामिन बी ट्वेल्व स्टोर इन द बॉडी अगेन बेटा ऑल ऑफ यू आर एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट यादव शुभम ब्रजेश यादव दिशु कर्तव्यम स्मृति दैट इवन इफ यू गिव दैट नॉन वेजिटेरियन डाइट फॉर वाइटामिन बी ट्वेल्व रिप्लेसमेंट बिकॉज इंट्रेंसिक फैक्टर इज नॉट देयर सो इंटेस्टाइनल एब्जॉर्बन ऑफ वाइटामिन बी ट्वेल्व विल नॉट हैपन दैट इज वाई वी हैव टू गिव वाइटामिन बी ट्वेल्व इंजेक्शंस टू दीज पेशेंट्स नॉट द ओरल बट द इंजेक्टेबल सप्लीमेंट्स द लील राइट रेगुलर वॉकिंग एंड एक्सरसाइजेस टू मेंटेन हेल्दी बॉडी वेट येस दैट इज एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट वेरी गुड आई होप वी गॉट दिस कॉन्सेप्ट नाइसली सो हियर इन द लीस्ट लाइकली एडवाइस विच वी प्रेफर हियर इट इज नॉट द नॉन वेजिटेरियन डाइट विच इज गोइंग टू इम्प्रूव द बी ट्वेल्व स्टोर्स इट इज द बी ट्वेल्व इंजेक्शंस विच आर गोइंग टू इम्प्रूव द बी ट्वेल्व स्टोर्स इन दिस पेशेंट वेरी गुड एस पी जी ग्रेट सो लेट्स मूव फर्दर ओके नाउ इफ यू लुक एट दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन आफ्टर थ्री डेज ऑफ लैप्रोस्कोपिक कोलिसमी पेशेंट प्रेजेंटेड इन द हॉस्पिटल विद कंप्लेन ऑफ लिटिल डिस्कम्फर्ट इन द राइट अपर एबडोम she is anecteric and afebrile no jaundice no fever on ultrasound minimal fluid collection was present under the liver suspected of bile leak from the cystic duct stump very good spg keep it up what should be done next ab kya karna hai right okay so rudra is saying c madhumita saying a sri varshini c sunidhi a adil c gop c bhavik a शुभम सागर अफसल सोयल लाले ललित सिंह बी ओके ब्रजेश सी ओके सो मेजॉरिटी ऑफ यू आर सेइंग सी सम ऑफ यू सेड ए ओके राइट सो लेट लेट्स जस्ट ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज दिस होल स्टोरी अबाउट ओके सो सपोज वी हैव डन अ कोली सिस्टेक्टेमी नाउ व्हेन वी हैव डन अ कोली सिस्टेक्टेमी देन suppose i say that this is the common bile duct this is the common hepatic duct this is the right and left hepatic duct this is the cystic duct here and we have actually removed the gall bladder okay cholecystectomy has been done so when cholecystectomy has been done we would have put some clips sometimes what happen during cholecystectomy the stones from the gall bladder can slip and they may go into the common bile duct that means after lap coli if some stones have slipped into the cystic into the common bile duct there is a traffic jam type of situation because of which the proximal people will dilate pressure in the proximal people will increase so beta when pressure in the proximal people increases many a times what can happen this high pressure can dislodge these clips so if the clips dislodges then what is going to happen bile which is present here that bile will start leaking out now this is a common complication after laparoscopic cholecystectomy this bile leak will get collected beneath the right uh, beneath the uh, liver in the right hypochondrium now the catch is look at me if there is a small amount of collection patient is not having significant symptoms then what we can do is we can simply do a ercp and through ercp we can just leave a stent inside so we can just put a stent into the common bile duct now what will happen by putting a stent in the common bile duct the bile will start flowing from this common bile duct and this leak will close spontaneously and this will heal so nothing else is required except ercp and stenting if 
there is minimal bile leak and patient is having little symptoms. But if by chance there is a huge amount of bile leak because of which there is a party as you rightly said, very good. So if there is a party in this area where the patient is febrile, fever, severe pain in the right hypochondrium, now first to save the life of this patient, we have to drain this party. And we know the concept, beta. whenever there is any localized collection in any area inside the body, we have to drain that collection without spillage. हमारे शरीर में अगर किसी भी इलाके में किसी एक जगह पे लोकलाइज्ड पस का कलेक्शन हो रहा है तो हमें उसको निकालना है फैलाना नहीं है राइट ड्रेनेज विदाउट स्पिलेज सो देर वी डू अल्ट्रासाउंड गाइडेड पिकटेल कैथेटर ड्रेनेज अल्ट्रासाउंड में देखते हुए वी जस्ट डू दिस पिकटेल कैथेटर ड्रेनेज एंड दिस पिकटेल कैथेटर इज समथिंग लाइक दिस इस तरह का दिखाई देता है बेटा पिक टेल ओके राइट एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस वी टेक लुक एट वेरियस अदर इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स तो यहाँ पे सिंपल थिंग्स व्हाट वी नो अबाउट दिस इज अ फोलीस कैथेटर दिस इज अ सुप्रा कैथ फॉर सुप्रा पीबिक सिस्टोस्टमी डोंट वरी अबाउट दिस बेटा दिस पीडीएफ विल बी शेयर अलॉन्ग विद दिस यूट्यूब इट दिस इज अ वैक्यूम सक्शन ट्रेन वॉट यू आर सींग हेयर दिस इज अ बार्ड पार्कर नाइफ handle the scalpel and the various blades the needle holder and in this needle holder there's a eye which is seen inside then uh, this is a suture cutting scissor the plain scissor these are the two forceps the tooth forcep and the plane of the thumb forcep the chittal forceps this is something what we commonly use in the dressing room to take out the gauze pieces from one drum and keep in the dressing tray Uh, these are the intestinal clamps the crushing non crushing clamps this is the skin stapler this is the skin stapler remover and these are various surgical staplers used inside the linear stapler the curvy linear stapler and the circular stapler right with a t tube insertion is uh, something uh, if there is a residual stone inside the cbd then uh, we put a you we do a cbd exploration and then we can remove uh, the cbd stone by t tube exploration and leave a, a, a t tube in common bile duct okay uh generally beta mr word with widism uh bile leak hua hai if we are able to catch this bile leak in the early stages na then just by putting a stent in the cbd it will spontaneously close the bile leak so the story will settle just by endoscopy but if the patient has started developing symptoms that means the party has started in the right hypochondrium then we go for ultrasound guided pigtail catheter drainage right okay okay Uh, another important uh, thing for the upcoming exam beta they can uh, even ask about the merezy syndrome whenever there is a large stone inside the gall bladder this large stone can put pressure on the common hepatic duct traffic jam and patient can have jaundice so jaundice due to compression of common hepatic duct by a large gall bladder stone or stone in the cystic duct pressing on the common hepatic duct that is what is merezy syndrome okay so this was the outline here uh let us look at the options ultrasound guided pigtail catheter drainage would have been the answer if in the question there would have been a temperature more than 100.4 degree fahrenheit or patient would have a significant pain serious uh, severe pain in the right hypochondrium reopen the wound and t tube insertion it is generally indicated whenever we are doing a cbd exploration usually when we have to remove a residual stone from the cbd ERCP and standing when the patient is having minimal leak, minimal symptoms, no party uh, going on, then we just do a endobiliary stenting and give antibiotics and send the patient home. No, this is not the correct approach. Better to go with ERCP with stenting. Right.
right beta. So all of you have got it right. Yukta, Ravi, uh, Dr. Power, very good. Another question here. A 40-year-old woman comes to the emergency. 40-year-old, emergency, pain in the right upper abdomen, jaundice, cholangitis suspected. Which of the following may not be considered a part of charcoal stride in cholangitis? Yes, Pita. So, charcoal. What is charcoal? Devshil, where are you? God bless you all, Pita. Yes. So, charcoal. Pain, fever, jaundice, pain, fever, jaundice, pain, fever, jaundice, pain, fever, jaundice, pain, fever, jaundice. This is what is charcoal. Mm -hmm. And Pita Reynolds. When this pain fever jaundice is associated with septicemia, that means patient is going into shock, hypotension, mental confusion. So pain fever jaundice, hypotension, mental confusion, that is Raynaud's pentard. Pain fever jaundice is charcoal's triad, right? Ab dekhte beta, what is the answer for this? Uh, majority of you are saying C, Beta G, please look at the question. C and D, okay. Which of the following is not considered a part of charcoal stride? All of us know pain fever jaundice. What is C? Yes, systolic blood pressure less than 100 millimeter of mercury. Right, so this is the correct answer and here you all are absolutely correct. This is actually a part of Raynaud's pentad. Right, also beta, in this given question, it should be temperature more than, right, more than. Right, very good. So this is what I wanted to check, right. All of you are absolutely correct. You mark the answer C, but at the same time A. Just wanted to see that whether you are committing the silly mistakes here or not. Right. So even this is the correct answer. Right. Okay. So pain, fever, jaundice. This is what we have to focus on. Pain, fever and jaundice. Pain in right upper abdomen. Yes. Yellowish discoloration of urine. Yes. Now fever. It should be temperature more than 100.4 degree Fahrenheit, ideally. Okay, so that is fever, right? Very good. So both the answers, as per this slide, are correct. But this was just to see whether you are uh, listening to the options carefully or not. Right, beta. <coughs> so now let us take a look at the A B C A. Yes, I am. That's right. D D D D is what? Yellowish discoloration of urine. Dr. Saab, uh, yellowish discoloration of urine uh, can be a feature of jaundice. Yes, Dina, you're right. Okay. Raynaud's pentad, bitter, uh, pain, fever, jaundice, hypotension, and mental confusion. Right. Now, this is an image based question. Again, bitter, this is a hot area from where the MCQ people are picking up, picking up the questions. Uh, in this hot area, uh, this is a story, something related to urinary stones, right? If we take a look at this particular X-ray beta, this is a plain X-ray of kidney, ureter and bladder, where we are able to see one radio-opaque shadow here, okay? So this looks to be a stone, fine. And in this image, we are seeing some contrast. There is some pipe type of thing, and we are able to see the contrast in the pelvic elytial system. So these are the two images with us. Now, let us take a look at the options. Options are Anderson Heinz pyeloplasty, ureteroscopic retrieval of stone with dormia basket, ESWL that is extracorporeal shock with lithotripsy and PCN, PCNL, percutaneous nephrolithotomy. Right, beta. Okay. Now let us see the last line of the question. What is the likely procedure done in this patient to get rid of the radio opaque shadow shown in the image one? Okay. 
likely procedure done in this patient to get rid of the radio opaque shadow shown in image one likely procedure fine uh, so he has given the various procedures and we have to identify which treatment has been done in this patient okay 35 year old male presented to the hospital with sudden onset of severe pain in the left flank associated with nausea analgesics were given to relieve the pain and plain x-ray KUB done as shown in the image one okay so image one says there is a stone in the left kidney fine and it looks to be a big stone okay fine patient underwent a surgical procedure following which x-ray is taken as shown in the image two okay so the first image is before the surgical procedure and the second image is after the surgical procedure and we have to identify which procedure has been done options are anderson heinz pyeloplasty now what is this anderson heinz pyeloplasty this is basically a pelvi ureteric junction reconstruction so whenever suppose this is the renal pelvis and this is the ureter if there is a stenosis at the pelvi ureteric junction then we do reconstruction of this pelvi ureteric junction and that is what is anderson heinz pyeloplasty okay ji so uh, if there is a stone then why we are doing this pyeloplasty no urs now beta urs that is ureteroscopic retrieval of stone should be done when the stone is present in the middle ureter or maybe the lower ureter so in urs we pass a endoscope that is a ureteroscope into the ureter and through the side channel of this ureteroscope we pass a dormia basket and this dormia basket is taken above the stone open the basket and withdraw the basket the innocent stone is caught between the wires of the basket and we withdraw the entire assembly out this is urs done usually for the lower ureteric stone but yes can be done for the upper middle ureteric stones as well ESWL is the standard treatment of choice to treat the urinary stones like uh, kidney, upper, middle ureteric stones. We do ESWL. The shock waves are fired directly onto the stone. Stone is broken into small fragments which align themselves as a Steenstrass phenomena in the ureter and they pass spontaneously in urine. ESWL cannot be done in the lower ureteric or the bladder stones because shock waves can damage the pelvic organs. Also, ESWL is not done when there is a bigger stone in the kidney more than 1.5 centimeters because if we break a big stone, the fragments may be big and they may get stuck in the ureter. Agar bade patthar hai bita, to bade patthar ko apan ESWL se nahi todhenge. Kyunki jo tute huye fragments honge, wo urine ke raaste mein, ureter mein, urethra mein phas sakte. Right? Okay. Why? Uh, this looks to be a big stone and plus what is important is what we are able to see in this image is there is some catheter type of thing seen inside the kidney okay so whenever we are doing a PCNL beta percutaneous nephrolithotomy when ESWL cannot be done to remove the kidney stones then we are doing this PCNL in this we pass a nephroscope through the renal parenchyma and retrieve the kidney stones break the stones and then retrieve them after we remove the scope because there is a opening in the renal parenchyma and urine will continuously leak through that so we leave a nephrostomy tube so this what we are seeing here is a nephrostomy tube right and we have put the contrast from the nephrostomy tube and that is how we are able to see the contrast in the pelvic shell system okay so basically in pcnl we are putting a nephrostomy tube also we should know beta that whenever we are treating the kidney ureteric stones we do leave a double j stent like here what we are seeing can you see there's a coil here and there is a coil here up so these are the two j loops this is a double j stent which is left inside and uh, this actually is the real double j stent how it looks like and how we put this whether we are doing a ESWL or we are doing a PCNL, it is always better to leave the DJ stent inside so that whatever stone fragments are there, they can pass alongside the stent into the bladder and then out. Okay, let us uh, see. 
सो बेटा इफ यू आर सींग नेफ्रोस्टमी ट्यूब यहाँ पे ये जो दिखाई दे रही है अपने को ये जो ट्यूब दिखाई दे रही है दिस इज अ नेफ्रोस्टमी ट्यूब एंड नेफ्रोस्टमी ट्यूब इज लेफ्ट इन केसेस ऑफ पी सी एन एल ओके राइट फाइन नेफ्रोस्टमी ट्यूब इज लेफ्ट इन केसेस ऑफ पी सी एन एल ओके बेटा राइट सो द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस वुड बी पी सी एन एल वॉट इज द लाइकली प्रोसीजर डन इन दिस पेशेंट टू गेट रेड ऑफ द रेडियो बिग शेडो राइट विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्ट्रक्चर इज नॉट कट इन ग्रिड आयरन इंसिशन ग्रिड आयरन इंसिशन फॉर अपेंडिसमी ओके दैट मीन्स इंसिशन फॉर अपेंडिसमी दीज आर गोइंग टू बी आर इंपॉर्टेंट एरिया फॉर अपेंडिसमी we know that uh, these are the various incisions which can be used the muscle splitting incisions they are grid iron or mcmanis incision and a lance incision the muscle cutting incisions the rocky davis if we extend it medially that is fowler bear if we extend it upwards and laterally that is rather ford morrison grid iron is a muscle splitting incision we do not cut the muscles in grid iron incision okay so how do we do appendectomy in these cases beta we in grid iron incision what we are doing is we are making an incision centered over the mcbunny's point we cut the skin subcutaneous tissue external oblique aponeurosis then we encounter the muscles the internal oblique and the transverse abdominis we just take a artery forcep and put it between the internal oblique and the transverse abdominis muscle fibers and we just split those muscle fibers beta and then we see the peritoneum we pinch the peritoneum and cut the peritoneum and enter inside the peritoneal cavity right and then try to deliver the appendix out and do a appendectomy in laparoscopic appendectomies beta we make three ports right uh the umbilical port then uh, another port in the uh, right lumbar region area another port maybe in the right epicondrium or maybe towards the left side and the gas used in laparoscopy beta all of you yes carbon dioxide right so we the we cut the external oblique aponeurosis then we reach on to the muscles the internal oblique and transverse abdominis okay so muscles are not cut because grid iron is a muscle splitting incision right so let's see what are the options here external oblique aponeurosis is cut peritoneum is cut muscle is not cut subcutaneous tissue is cut right okay fine that means the correct answer for this would be transverse abdominis right good that means incisions are going to be important for us and from appendicitis topic beta there are two more things which are going to be helpful one is the mentorel score now mentorel score or the alvarado score migratory right leg fossa pain anorexia nausea vomiting tenderness rebound tenderness elevated temperature leukocytosis and shift for neutrophils one point is given for everything in this except tenderness and leukocytosis which are given two points each if you total the score in mentorels it becomes 10 if the score is less than 5 acute appendicitis is ruled out if the score is 7 or more than 7 then there is high probability of acute appendicitis so this is one area from where we can get the mcqs another area in appendix is appendicular abscess now whenever there is a localized collection of pus anywhere inside the body the concept is we have to drain this without spillage right okay so for appendicular abscess we do extra peritoneal drainage so this is what we'll remember from this okay moving to the next one yes so who is going to tell me this right i'll just wait for your answers for this question which of the following is true about class 3a category of nehas classification for inguinal hernia so beta nehas classification what we know about is 
1, 2 indirect, 3A direct, 3B both, 3C femoral, 4 recurrent. Everybody, 1, 2 indirect, 3A direct, 3B both, 3C femoral, 4 recurrent. Right. Now here he is asking class 3A. Class 3A means what? Class 3A means directing well hernia. Right? Let's see. Madhumita, Aditya, Nikki, Aishwarya. Class 3A is direct. Twinkle, Jayendra, very good. So all of you are marking this correct. I repeat till the time when you're reading the question. 1, 2, indirect, 3A direct, 3B both. 3C femoral, 4 recurrent. Very good, Pratyusha. Rajan, very good, direct old age. Inguinal hernias, they are more commonly seen in patients or uh, people with uh, wide and short pelvis. Okay, so I'm getting the answers now. B, A, Abhitej, B, Tarun, A, Ravi, A, Ram Narayan A, Afsal, Madhumita, Aisem, Satek, Vibhuti, Jigar, Devshil. Okay. SPG A, Ashish D, Arsh, Asad A. So majority of the answers are A. Now, Shubham is saying B. Prag is saying B. Okay, so basically mainly A and B is going on. Sanjay is saying D. Kedar is saying B. Shabin B. Sunil, Smriti. Sunil is saying B. Smriti is saying A. Okay, so let's just try to see what is this A and what is this B. Before, before we mark the answer, let us quickly take a look at what is the basic difference. The commonest hernia what we see is the inguinal hernia and that to indirect inguinal hernia which is more common in younger people. Direct inguinal hernias are more common in elderly people. The indirect inguinal hernias, if we look at the inguinal canal here, the indirect inguinal hernia protrude through the deep inguinal ring which is lateral to the inferior epigastric vessel. Deep inguinal ring is a defect in the transversalis fascia. While direct inguinal hernias, they occur medial to the inferior epigastric vessels through the Heselbeck's triangle. Now, Heselbeck's triangle is also something which is in the transversalis fascia, right? Okay. <clears throat> the indirect inguinal hernias, they generally travel in a downward, forward and medial direction and they commonly go into the scrotum. But direct inguinal hernias, they protrude in a forward direction. So chances of going into the scrotum for direct hernias is less. Right. So this is the broad outline what we have. Now still the fight is going on between A, B, D. D is also coming up. Let me just, now let me just check. I also uh, don't remember exactly when I was framing this. Uh, basically, we have to just remember that direct inguinal hernias, they are protruding through the Heselbeck's triangle, which is in the transversalis fascia, which is medial to the inferior epigastric vessels. Let's see. Protrusion of hernia through a natural defect in the transversalis fascia, lateral to inferior epigastric vessels. This is indirect inguinal hernia. So, lateral to inferior epigastric vessel, Vishnu, it is indirect inguinal hernia and he is asking 3A. 3A means we have to look where is the direct hernia. Okay. Right. Second option is protrusion of hernia through a defect in the transversal fascia at the Heselbeck's triangle in the inguinal canal. Yes. So direct inguinal hernias they come out through the Heselbeck's triangle. So this is a case of direct inguinal hernia. 
Now, protrusion of hernia through a defect in the external oblique aponeurosis at the Heselbeck triangle. No, external oblique aponeurosis forms the anterior wall of the inguinal canal, not the posterior wall, and the hernias usually protrude through the posterior wall. Okay. Protrusion of hernia through a natural defect in the external oblique aponeurosis. No, it is not the external oblique aponeurosis from where they are coming out, above and medial to the pubic tubercle. <clears throat> So this is also not the right one. So basically the correct answer for this will be B. Yes. Now everyone of you got it right. Sagar Smriti, Sajan. Perfect. Very good. Right, Pratyusha. So let's move. Okay. So this looks to be an image based question again. Okay. So the image given is looking London and talking Tokyo कहीं पे निगाह है कहीं पे निशाना fine that means there is injury to the perineal area this is what is shown here okay जी let's try to figure it out let's look at the options location is distal to external sphincter and treatment is done at laparotomy, location is bladder at the dome and treatment at laparotomy, location is proximal to external sphincter, treatment is pelvic packing with bilateral percutaneous nephrostomy, location is distal to external sphincter and treatment is suprapubic cystostomy. Okay, very good, good doctor, uh, Pratyusha, manhole injuries, bulbar urethra, you are very right, this confusion. Uh, Maru, yes, it's rupture urethra, vibhuti, madhumita, yes, it is perineal bulbar urethral injury, uh, fine. So, Deepak, D, Yashpin, Satik, Ram Narayan, Faisal, Sudhir, perfect, beta. let's have a big round of applause for all of you. Shubham, Pratyusha, Mohan, Sunidhi, I am Twinkle, Deepak, Durga, every one of you is absolutely correct and a big round of applause for all of you, Vita, and salute to all of you. Yes, Kajal, Dev, very good, wonderful. So herein, just uh, a quick uh, reminder that uh, uh, what is the mode of injury to the bladder and the urethra? Like here, what we are able to see, this is the urinary bladder. Majority of bladder ruptures are extraperitoneal and they are associated with fracture pelvis. Intraperitoneal bladder ruptures occur at the dome or fundus when there is trauma to overdistended bladder, but they are rare and they require laparotomy. Urethral ruptures can be posterior urethra or anterior urethra. In posterior urethra, it is the membranous urethra. Anterior urethra, it is the bulbar or the perineal urethra which ruptures most commonly. Membranous urethral ruptures are more often associated with road traffic accidents, that is fracture pelvis, when there is collection of blood and urine in the true pelvic area. While any perineal trauma will cause injury to the perineal or the bulbar urethra, whether it is loose manhole covers or maybe fall from height or maybe bicycle accidents. And in this, the blood and urine will get collected in the perineum, in the scrotum, in the penis and in the lower anterior abdominal wall beneath the scarpus fascia, right? If the patient presents with retention of urine, we should not put a Foley's urethral catheter because it can widen the urethral injuries. It is better to do a suprapubic cystostomy for suspected urethral ruptures in case of retention of urine. Right, beta. So this is the background story. And uh, because there is a sphincter story mentioned here. So if we quickly see where is the location of the sphincters in the male urethra, Internal sphincter is located at the bladder neck and the external sphincter is located in the membranous urethra. If he is talking about a perineal urethra injury, that means perineal urethra or bulbar urethra is distal to the external sphincter. Distal to the external sphincter. Right, Bita? Yes, Madhumita, thank you for reminding me. Retrograde urethrogram is the common investigation what we do in suspected urethral injuries. Very good. Great. So herein, uh, it should be distal to external urethral sphincter and it should require a suprapubic cystostomy. 
So here he is saying laparotomy, that means this is not right, it's not bladder rupture, it's not proximal to external urethra, it is distal to external urethra, and it will require suprapubic cystostomy. But before we mark the answer, let us have a quick look at the question. What is the location of the injury? Next step in the management. Man is brought to the emergency after he injured his perineum, feels the urge to mixture it, but unable to pass urine. Blood at the external urethral meatus with extensive swelling of the penis and the scrotum. Perfect. Great. So the correct answer for this, as you all rightly said, yes, it is distal to the external urethral sphincter and will require suprapubic cystostomy. Perfect. Jayendra, the prestigious stethoscope is waiting for you eagerly. Right? Okay. Fine, beta. Now this is another image-based question and this is a case of rectal prolapse. Yes. The rectal prolapse can be either a partial or a complete rectal prolapse. Partial when only mucosa protrude out and complete when all layers of the rectum protrude out. Complete rectal prolapse is generally more than 4 centimeters in length and it is called as hernia and glissade. In children, the rectal prolapse just require a digital repositioning where the mother has to take a tissue paper on her finger. Whenever the baby goes for defecation and the rectum comes out, mother has to do digital repositioning of this rectum back inside, leave the tissue paper inside. As the baby is in the growing age, when the muscles develop, the story settles on its own. However, sometimes it may require some operative correction by perineal or abdominal roots. Perineal approaches include the arch wiring, Delorms and Altemias. Abdominal root, we do resection, rectoscope, rectopexy. We can also do welts, Ripstein, and Lahots operations via abdominal root. So he's asking which of the following is not a perineal approach. So, beta, perineal approaches, what we said were Thiersch wiring, Delorms and altemias, while abdominal root we are doing resection rectopexy, that is the standard treatment what we do, gold standard treatment for rectal prolapse. However, by abdominal root we can also do a Wells operation, a Ripstein operation and a Lahots operation. These are abdominal operations for rectal prolapse. Perfect. Banu, Ahmad, Raj, Vishnu, every one of you, absolutely correct. So, Ripstein is not the perineal, it is the abdominal operation. Wow. Wonderful. Another question coming up. 65-year-old male presented to the OPD with painless hematuria for the last 12 days. Based on the clinical findings, he was evaluated by CECT where 7 into 4 centimeter mass was found at the upper pole of the left kidney, suspected of renal cell carcinoma. Ideal management for renal cell carcinoma in this case should be Beta G, Pankaj, Shubham, Rishi, Jaya, Sunidhi. Okay. Discarded Lahots. That is also abdominal uh, operation for rectal prolapse. Definitely going to win the war. Yes, Wells, Ripstein, Lahots. Okay. Let us let us see, beta. When we do partial, now I am convinced, beta. Thank you so very much. Uh, you all are absolutely correct. That means uh, when it is seven into four centimeters, we'll be going with the radical nephrectomy when to do partial nephrectomy because this is going to be an important area. Now, what are the indications for doing a partial nephrectomy or a nephron sparing surgery? See, these are the indications for doing a partial nephrectomy, beta G. If the kidney cancer is less than 4 cm in size or in selected cases, 4 to less than 7 cm in size, then we go for partial. Or if there is a cancer in both the kidneys, then also partial. Or if the patient is having only one kidney and there is a cancer in that one kidney, then also partial. Or if the renal function is not good, 
and there is a tumor in one of the kidneys, then also we try to preserve as many nephrons as possible. So these are the indications of doing partial nephrectomy. Herein, in the given question, yes, less than 4 centimeter partial, 4 or more than 4 centimeter radical. This is what we have to remember. In selected cases, between 4 to less than 7 centimeter, very good Pratyusha. Bas ye dhyan rakhna hai. Less than 4, uh, 4 to less than 7 centimeter in selected cases, we can go for partial. That is why the examiner has clearly mentioned, it is not less than 7, it is 7, right? So we go with radical nephrectomy, right beta? Chaliye. So I hope uh, we'll remember this in our exam. What is the preferred treatment option for a 65 year old male, known case of prostate cancer, 2 into 3 centimeter nodule, confined within the prostate? Yes, Banu, you're right. Great. Chali beta, ab isko dekhte hai. Yes. Sixty-five year old hai beta, prostate cancer hai. Cancer is confined within the prostate, hai na? So what should be the treatment for a localized prostate cancer confined within the prostate? Age is sixty-five years. Very good. So I'm getting A, B, C, D, all the four answers. Now let me have a look. Majority of you are going in favor of B. B is this. Okay. Yes, Dave, you pointed out age less than 70. That's right. Very good. Yes, uh, medic vision uh, less than 70. Yes, right. Okay, so what we know about the treatment for prostate cancer, quickly let us see uh, the two things. Suppose, cancer within the prostate, then we have to see two things less than 70 years of age that means life expectancy more than 10 years then we do a radical prostatectomy or we can do external radiotherapy using iodine 125 or palladium 103 however if the age is more than 70 that means life expectancy less than 10 years, then no need to do this radical prostatectomy or external radiotherapy. We just do active surveillance. If the cancer has gone beyond the prostate, that means now we will not be able to cure the patient, only palliation will be the option. And palliative treatment by androgen ablation to destroy the androgens and this can be done either by medicines or by surgery. Medicines we can use LHRH agonist, LHRH antagonist like gocerilin and surgical castration is done by bilateral orchidectomy, right? <clears throat> Medical castration is better. So herein, in the given question, he is saying that cancer is confined within the prostate that means he's talking about this and the age is less than 70 years so he's talking about this that means we can go for radical prostatectomy or we can go for curative external radiotherapy with iodine 125 or palladium 103 right fine now we have to choose so gosarlin no gosarlin will not be the right choice Palliative treatment, no. Since the cancer is within the prostate, we can cure this patient. So it is not palliative, though we would have done a curative treatment with iodine-125 or palladium-103. 
active surveillance no the age is less than 70 years so the best answer out of the given four options will be radical prostatectomy why we are not going with b answer beta g because in b answer he has written palliative it is not palliative it is curative treatment what we are doing right okay fine so the correct answer is radical prostatectomy okay g now let us take a look at another question here i know that all of you sh would be able to answer this yes right so this is a 60 year old lady presented to the hospital with lump in the breast lump was located in the upper outer quadrant of the right breast with negative ipsilateral axillary lymph nodes patient underwent breast conservation surgery and was diagnosed as well differentiated invasive ductal cancer negative resection margin erpr negative heart to new negative next mandatory step right beta okay so when do we give uh, this uh, if ERPR are positive, estrogen, progesterone receptors are positive, then we give hormonal therapy depending on whether it is premenopausal or postmenopausal. In premenopausal, we know we give tamoxifen, and in postmenopausal, we give anastrozoles, aromatase inhibitors. Right. If ERPR are positive, if HER2 new is positive, then we know that we are going to give the trastuzumab or per tuzu map right no axillary lymph nodes involved so no need for axillary lymph node dissection very good fine herein this is not this is not now chemotherapy chemotherapy can be given with cyclophosphamide adriamycin uh, 5-fluorouracil or maybe cyclophosphamide methotrexate and 5-fluorouracil or we can use adramycin cyclophosphamide and texanes, right? Uh, chemotherapy is generally indicated in poorly differentiated cancers or heavily lymph node positive cancers, right? Herein, since the lymph nodes are not involved and there is no comment regarding the differentiation, uh, but yes, one thing he is mentioning is uh, breast conservation surgery. And we should know that in breast conservation surgery, we have to remove that lump or the tumor with one centimeter margin. Apart from this, adjuvant radiotherapy is a must. If because of any reason radiation cannot be given, then breast conservation surgery cannot be done. Okay, so this is the case of a 60 year old lady with a cancer in the right breast, no lymph nodes, no lymph node dissection required, ERPR negative, no hormonal therapy needed, heart to new negative, no trastuzumab, pertuzumab needed, breast conservation surgery is done. So we have to give adjuvant radiotherapy and you all are absolutely correct. A big round of applause for all of you. Right. <clears throat> and the question coming up, which of the following is in accordance with the luminal A? Okay, luminal A, like breast cancer, as per molecular classification of breast cancer. Okay, so let's see with up. Wonderful. Lavnish, Mayank, Mahantesh, Yadu, Ravi, Atul, Yukta, Dev, Medvision. Dev, Bita, I hope you are doing good and you are focused, pumped up. Right, Bita. He is asking about luminal A. So what is this luminal A? Chemotherapy, yes, only for advanced cases discarded. Pratyusha, Harsh, yes, you got it right. Atul. Okay, let us just try to see what is this uh, molecular classification quickly. So this is the molecular classification right in front of you. Uh, luminal A is when ERPR positive, HER2 new negative and KI67 low. This is the best prognosis. 
luminal B, ERPR positive, HER2 new negative, but KI67 is high. HER2 new enriched when ERPR negative, HER2 new positive, and KI67 high. Basal or triple negative when all three ERPR, HER2 new are negative, and KI67 high. Claudine low when ERPR negative, HER2 new negative, and Claudine is low. So other varieties do have a poorer prognosis, but luminal A has the best prognosis. So let's see if this is the table here then what is luminal A in this? We know that if ERPR are positive, if ERPR are positive, it carries good prognosis. If HER2 new is positive, then it carries poor prognosis. If KI67 is high, then it is poor. And if Claudine is low, then also it is poor. Right. And since luminal A has the best prognosis. Uh, okay, Shubham, uh, let us just complete this, then we'll switch back to the previous question. So herein, we can see that ERPR positive, HER2 new negative and low KI67, this is what is luminal A. ERPR positive, HER2 new negative and high KI67, this is luminal B. ERPR negative, HER2 new positive, high KI67. This is HER2 new enriched type. ERPR negative, HER2 new negative, high KI67. This is the basal type. Okay. So these are the various types what we can see here. Acha Tul Kaneja ji, thank you. I'll try my best, beta. I'll definitely take, I, I did not notice this. Right. Okay, so previous question, Shubham. Just have a look at this question, Vita. And uh, just let me know what is creating butterflies uh, inside you. I would be really happy if I know uh, the answer for your uh, queries. Right. So triple negative is the basal type. Even Claudine low Pratusha is triple negative. ERPR and HER2 new negative. But Claudine is low there Pratusha, right? And in basal, it is the high KI67, which differentiates the basal from that Claudine low variety. Right, Shubham. Uh, Anji Bitta. 60-year-old lady to the hospital lump in the breast, upper outer quadrant, negative lymph nodes. Breast conservation surgery has been done. Negative resection margins, ERPR negative, hard to new negative. Herceptin beta is trastuzumab and this is given in LABC locally advanced breast cancer but only if hard to new is positive Prashant. Tab apan dekhenge. Denge. Not C is correct. Uh, Shubham, Bita, is me hard to new negative hai. Anna? Hard to new is negative. So hard to new negative hai, there is no role of this uh, uh, cross to zoom app. Anna, Bita? Ha, Akshay, these sessions will be saved. Yes, discard it. You are right. Cross to zoom app is treatment in hard to new positive. Lekin yaha pe hard to new negative hai. It's a gene, Ritwik. Nottingham prognostic index is to calculate the prognosis of breast cancer. And generally, beta, regarding the questions on prognosis of cancers, it is the stage of the cancer which decides the prognosis. And stage means TNM, tumor lymph node metastasis. And out of this tumor lymph node and metastasis, lymph node is the most important. Uh, Samota, in this case, if patient kidney function is impaired and the tumor is 7 centimeters, then also we prefer doing a partial nephrectomy. Lobular carcinoma treatment is almost the same beta, except that lobular cancers are more often considered to be bilateral. Thank you, Atul Khaneja, beta. Uh, thank you for such nice words of appreciation. Right. Thik hai, Shubham Bita. Agar phir bhi koi confusion ho na, Shubham Bita, mere ko WhatsApp pe likhna. Right? And I would be really happy to answer. 
Okay. And uh, before we pass on from this, this is a PUD orange appearance what we are seeing. And the latest update in the new Billion Love says that PUD orange, this is due to blockage of subdermal superficial lymphatics of the skin by the cancer cell. If PUD orange is involving up to one third surface area of the breast, it is T4B. But if PUD orange involves more than one third surface area of the breast, along with redness inflammation of the breast, this is T4D. Right. Chali beta, aage chalte hai. And uh, yes. Okay. Patient was brought to the emergency room following a road traffic accident. As per Glasgow Coma Score, which of the following injury would you classify the patient to be suffering from severe injury? Okay. Right. Very good. Okay. Acha beta, abhi Glasgow Coma Scare ग्लासगो कोमा स्केल या ग्लासगो कोमा स्कोर की जो हम बात करते हैं नहीं बेटा अगर आप उसको ध्यान से देखोगे ना तो टॉपिक्स समोटा वुड बी द सेम राइट टॉपिक्स मोर और लेस काफी मिलते जुलते होंगे लेकिन जो क्वेश्चंस की फ्रेमिंग है ना वो थोड़ी सी अलग है अगर अपन अपने एफएमजी एग्जाम को एनालाइज करें तो अपने पास Eighty percent of the times you will see the topics are same, or twenty percent अलग topics से आता है। तो मेरा जो purpose था बेटा आपके सामने आने का भी, वो उन्हीं topics पे ज़्यादा focus करने का था, जिन topics से questions pick करने के chances सबसे ज़्यादा हैं। तो it was just a effort, a trial from my side. I S M Bishke की S nine to twelve is moderate, चलती के नौ से बारा is moderate। चलो बेटा एक बार इस question को solve करने से पहले uh, you have started answering it A, C, C. Okay, C. I'll also have to read this bit up before I say that uh, the answer is C. So, one more quickly, Glasgow Coma Scale, because this is again a hot topic. Hana? Pratyusha, uh, let, let us just uh, see the Glasgow Coma Scale. Ek bari. Uh, we know that in Glasgow Coma Scale, we look at the eye verbal and the motor responses. Uh, maximum I score possible for verbal 5, motor 6. So total maximum possible is 15. Minimum is I1, verbal 1, motor 1. So total minimum GCS possible is 3. That means 3 to 15. Abhi mild, moderate and severe. 13 to 15 is mild. 9 to 12 is moderate. 8 or less than 8 is severe. Right? Even if the person is dead, the minimum possible GCS is 3. And kaise calculate karna beta I score? Suppose patient has come to us in the emergency. So if he is able to open his eyes spontaneously, if he is open his eyes and sees his eyes, then maximum 4 numbers. If the patient's eyes are closed, he is drowsy, then you give him a voice command. Maybe you can drop some pen or something. Something like this. Or you can ask him, and he opens his eyes. So this is eye 3. If he does not open his eyes on voice or sound command, then you give him a painful or pressure stimulus and he opens his eyes after this. This is I2. And if he does not open his eyes even on this painful or pressure stimulus, then please check whether the system is working or not. This is I1. Verbal response. Kis tarah se baat kar rahe? If he is talking decently, fully conscious, oriented to time, place and person, Maximum verbal 5. But if he is confused, he is asking you, who are you? Why are you here? Why have you come to my home? He is asking these types because he is not oriented. So this is verbal 4. And if we start using abusive language, if you want to do something like that, this is verbal 3. If he is not able to speak out any words, he is not coming out of his mouth, but he is making some sounds, but he is making some sounds, Ah, 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 this is verbal 2. And if no sound is coming out, this is verbal 1. Is it there is a motor responses? Whether he is able to move his muscles normally or not. Suppose you ask this patient, yes, gentlemen, move your right upper limb, and he raises the right upper limb. He is obeying the commands. This is 6, motor 6. But if he does not obey the command, then you pinch him 
and suppose suddenly he localizes, this is 5. If he withdraws, that is a normal flexion movement, this is motor 4. If there is an abnormal flexion movement, not like this, but maybe like this, this is motor 3. And if he makes a quickly C, right beta. Open his eyes on voice command, eyes opening on voice command. So this is E2, not able to speak out any words, but making sounds. So this is V2 and withdrawing his hands on painful stimulus. So this is motor four. Sorry, I'm sorry here. Open his eyes on voice command. This is I3, okay. Making incomprehensible sounds is V2. Withdrawing his hands, that is motor 4. So 4 plus 2 plus 3, 4, 2, 6, or 3, no. So this is 9. And what do we need? 8 or less than 8, don't know. Open his eyes on pressure stimulus, that is E2. Uses abusive language, this is V3. Withdrawal, this is M4. 4, 4, 3, 7, 2, 9. So this is 9 number. Hua. Open his eyes on pressure stimulation, this is E2. Not able to speak any words but making sounds, this is V2. And withdrawing his hands on painful stimulus, this is motor 4. So this is 4, 2, 6, 2, 8. So this is 8. Okay. Open his eyes on voice command, this is E3. He uses abusive language, this is V3. And abnormal flexion movement on painful stimulation. This is M3. So, 3 or 3, 6 or 3, no. So, this is also 9. Okay. Fine. Right, Smriti. Thank you, Bita. Thank you so very much. Right. Yes, Pawan. I made a mistake there. Ha, Arjun. Usse yaad reh jayega, Bita. Chalti ke 9 se 12 na? To chalti ke 9 se 12 is moderate. Achcha. Okay. Kya? Yeah. Right, so Sprati, absolutely right, Bita. So you all uh, answered it rightly. Right, okay. So now, basically, Bita, what my thought process is that uh, probably this GCS is something where uh, the examiner tries to pick up. So it's very important. It time a lot of time, yes, I know. And clinical subjects, na, especially when we are looking at the January exam. So the past experiences do say that uh, clinical subject, that is paper 2, can be a bit of lengthy uh, question. Thank you, Nikhil Bita. Thank you so very much. Thank you. And God bless you, Bita. And may you be successful all throughout. Chale. Now, let's see the other question. I think, uh, I hope I'm not taking too much of your time. 28-year-old male, while riding a motorcycle at a high speed, met with an accident. He was brought to the emergency. There was profuse bleeding from the right thigh and was transfused blood, according to the blood transfusion protocol. Which of the following infection is least likely? least likely to be transmitted to the recipient after blood transfusion. Achha. Okay. HIV, Hepatitis B, Dengue and Malaria. Okay. So, what all infections are transmitted through blood? Subhashri. Thank you very much, Bita. Thank you so very much. So, all of you are absolutely correct, Bita. Afsal, Rishi, Samuta, Yashpin, Jaya, Umapati, Hiren. Mayank, Raj, Ravi, Prince, Sajad, Sanjay, Prince. Very good, Bita. So we know that the infections which can be transmitted through blood are HIV, Hepatitis B, Hepatitis C, Malaria, Syphilis. These can be transmitted through blood. So out of the given, Dengue is something which we can rule out. But there is a Chinese literature and I would like to thank, uh, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, one student who showed me that uh, Chinese literature where uh, it was written that yes, dengue can also be transmitted, but if we are focusing on the Indian literature, then uh, uh, yes, we can rule out this dengue. Right, Bita. Uh, the categories of blood loss are also going to be important for the upcoming exam. Uh, class 1, 2, 3, 4, 
not hepatitis A. Yes, I am Bishkek. This was a question which was asked already in our previous year exams. Uh, right, except hepatitis A. That's right. Thank you so much, Shavam. I love you too, Beta. Uh, right, so in the categories of blood loss, 1 to 3 and 4, 0 to 15, 15 to 30, 30 to 40, more than 40. 0 to 15, 15 to 30, 30 to 40, more than 40. 0 to 15, 15 to 30, 30 to 40, more than 40. Hamita, least likely to dengue transmit nahi hoga. Right. Tennis ball game. Very good, Aizam Bishkek. You remember the small little details. Right. Okay. So this is an image based question, Mita. Yes, Medivision. That's right. Uh, ye, uh, this, all of you, I'm just waiting. You would be bubbling with the answer for this. Okay, I should show the question. Yes, battle sign, that's right. The given image in a patient with road traffic accident is suggestive of. Perfect, beta. Pratyusha, yes, it's fracture of middle cranial fossa, discarded fusion, it is betel sign. All of you are absolutely right, it is betel sign. Right. Mestoiditis, bruising brownish discoloration of the mestoid. That's right. Perfect. So we have to focus on middle cranial fossa, betel sign story. Fracture of ethmoid bone and periorbital hematomas. This is actually anterior cranial fossa fracture where we find raccoon eyes. A fracture of petrous part of temporal bone. Yes, this is the middle cranial fossa fracture. Injury at the terion with blood collection between periosteum and dura mater. This is extra dural hematoma, wherein the commonest vessel ruptured is the middle meningeal artery. Injury of the styloid process with inflammation of styloid. This is basically stylgia. So herein, out of the given option, yes, everyone, you're absolutely correct. Eagle syndrome, Pratyusha, that's right. So this is Eagle syndrome. Thank you for reminding me, Pratyusha. God bless you. Right, so let's move to another question here. And in this question, uh, okay, so this is a common image. And again, all of you would be able to handle this image nicely. Right. Jadugar sir ki, SPG Jadugar sir ki date, I think was scheduled mein hai, mujhe off hand yaad nahi hai, but Jadugar sir ka SPG dhyan rakhna beta, 20 January ki sham ko, he would come out to be a Jadugar. Chale beta, so let's see. Perfect. So every one of you, you are able to make it nicely here uh, because it's a lenticular hyperdense biconvex shadow. So this is extradural hematoma, idli. Perfect. Perfect, beta. Great. Thank you so very much. That means you will not be doing any mistake in this idli story. Now let us take a look at the options. Most often patient presents with a transient period of uh, Consciousness after trauma where he can carry out normal routine activities even after significant injury. So this, he is mentioning something about lucid interval. Yes, we see that lucid interval in extradural hematomas. Cortical bridging emissary veins are damaged in this injury. No, cortical bridging emissary veins are damaged in subdural hematomas. Crescent shaped lesion on a CT scan. Crescent shaped is like a banana. So that is not seen in extradural, that is seen in subdural hematoma. These type of injuries will never require craniotomy or burr hole evacuation. No, this is a false statement because whenever intracranial pressure increases, then yes, definitely we need to do a craniotomy or burr hole evacuation for this. Yes, Aditi, I, I have discussed this. So uh, this is right. Yes, uh, SPG beta, whenever the intracranial pressure is high and it is not resolving with diuretics, 
then we'll definitely go for craniotomy. Yes, right. So I hope this is sorted. Fine. So every one of you coming up with A, Samota, Mayank, Rajendra. Right. Great. Fine. Now moving on to another question here. Uh, this question is also we have discussed, but uh, let's do it. 25 year old male brought to emergency after road traffic accident, respiratory rate 28, blood pressure 90 by 55. Looks to be a lengthy question, so let me just read the appropriate management. Last line of the question, appropriate management, whether to do a tube thoracostomy in the fifth intercostal space along the upper border of the lower rib connected to underwater seal bag or to put a white bore needle in the fifth intercostal space followed by intercostal tube in the fifth intercostal space or aspiration of the pleural fluid or finger thoracotomy. Okay, so what I know about this question is that uh, generally we are going to put a tube thoracostomy in the fourth or fifth intercostal space just anterior to the mid axillary line along the upper border of the lower rib and we connect this uh, intercostal tube which the catheter size is 28 to 32 French to underwater seal bag and this is actually the treatment what we do in cases of hemothorax or maybe pneumothorax because we drain the collection so that adequate space is uh, developed inside the chest and then breathing exercises will allow the lung to expand right white bore needle insertion in the fifth intercostal space this what i know is we do it for tension pneumothorax and once the life is saved then we can put the intercostal tube aspiration of pleural fluid will be required in cases of pleural effusion maybe due to some diseases like tuberculosis and so uh, finger thoracotomy finger thoracotomy uh, may be required in cases of emergency uh, Right. Maybe if we have to stop the bleed quickly. Right. So let's see what all is written in the question. Uh, let's see what is the pathology here. Respiratory rate is 28. BP is 90 by 55. Hyper resonance is heard over the right side of the chest. That means there is air. That means pneumothorax. Visible distended neck veins were noted. So this is a case of tension pneumothorax because in tension pneumothorax, huge amount of air gets collected which not only put pressure on one side lung but pushes the mediastinum to the opposite side and the other lung is also under pressure so patient is not able to get the oxygen inside that is why we are putting a needle just to decompress the system and get some minutes so that we can put the tube and drain all this uh, pressure or air outside so when there is huge amount of pressure inside it will put pressure on the vena cavas because of which the jugular venous pressure will increase the jugular neck veins will be engorged and dilated right uh, in cardiac tamponade beta we see a back stride right what is that raised jvp hypotension muffled heart sounds in cardiac tamponade when there is blood collection around the heart it again put pressure on the vena cavas so the jugular veins dilated pressure in them is high heart is not able to pump hypotension and heart sounds are not properly audible because of collection of fluid around the heart or blood around the heart right beta so this is a clear-cut case of tension pneumothorax which is confirmed by x-ray as well tracheal shift is seen so all of you are absolutely correct the answer is b right which of the following is not true about claudication pain? So claudication distance decreases. Oh, now what is claudication beta? Whenever there is a gradual arterial obstruction, suppose in the lower limbs, the commonest cause of gradual arterial obstruction is atherosclerosis, which takes lots and lots of time, maybe months to years to develop. So initially when there is a traffic jam in the artery, the supply to the distal part will decrease. Ideally, the patient should suffer from symptoms in the distal most part, like in the foot. But before the patient experiences pain in the foot, what happens? When the person is walking, on walking, the muscles are contracting. When the patient 
आई रिपीट दिस इन हिंदी बेटा कि अगर मान लो अपन लोअर लिम फेमोरल आर्टरी की बात कर लेते हैं कि मान लो उसमें कोई एथेरोमा बन रहा है इसको बनने में महीनों सालों लगते हैं तो जैसे जैसे वो एथ्रोमेटस प्लाग बन रहा है ना तो एक ट्रैफिक जैम जैसी चीज डेवलप हो रही है फेमोरल आर्टरी में उससे नीचे की सप्लाई कम हो रही है आइडियली क्या होना चाहिए बेटा जो पैर का सबसे आखिरी हिस्सा है उसको सबसे कम सप्लाई जानी चाहिए तो पेशेंट को पैर के सबसे आखिरी हिस्से यानी कि फुट में दर्द होना चाहिए लेकिन फुट में दर्द होने से पहले जब पेशेंट चलता है चलते समय जब पैरों की मसल्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट करते हैं ना वेन द मसल्स ऑफ द लोअर लेम आर कॉन्ट्रैक्टिंग से द मोस्ट बल्कि एरिया ऑफ द काफ काफ मसल्स दे विल बी रिक्वायरिंग मैक्सिमम ऑक्सीजन एंड इफ देर इज अ ट्रैफिक जैम अब एडिकुएट ऑक्सीजन विल नॉट बी कमिंग टू दो वर्किंग काफ मसल्स एंड दैट पेन इन द काफ ऑन वॉकिंग is what we call as claudication right it can be felt in the upper limbs also when the teacher is writing at a fast pace the fingers may start paining so that is claudication right so claudication pain is never seen on taking the first step it is seen on walking a certain distance and the distance which the patient is able to walk is called as claudication distance jaise jaise disease ki severity badhti jayegi as the disease severity will increase the patient will not be able to walk for long distances that means the claudication distance will decrease also if the patient is walking against the wind or patient is walking on a hill right then also the claudication distance will decrease right this is the story and there is a boyd's grading for this 1 2 3 4 1 1 pain in the calf on walking a certain distance which improves with further walking due to wash out of substance p grade 2 pain in the calf on walking a certain distance but patient continues to walk with pain grade 3 pain in the calf on walking a certain distance now the pain is very severe he cannot walk any further he has to take rest and grade 4 is rest pain and rest pain is not in the calf rest pain is in the foot right okay Claudication distance decreases while walking against the wind. This is a true statement. Patient ज़्यादा दूर नहीं चल पाएगा अगर wind के against भाग रहा है तो Claudication pain is not experienced on taking the first step. ये भी बात सही है Common cause is atherosclerosis. Yes, that is the commonest cause. In young smoker males, Burgess disease. Yes, ये भी बात सही है Claudication pain is felt in the foot. अरे बाबा foot में नहीं होता है ये तो काफ में होता है राइट जया बिल्कुल बेटा रेस्ट पेन इज क्राई ऑफ डाइंग नर्व दैट इज फेल्ट इन द फुट एट रेस्ट अच्छा बेटा एथ्रोस्क्लोरोसिस का ध्यान रखना अगर क्वेश्चन में एज दी हुई है आफ्टर फिफ्टी ईयर्स तो एथ्रोस्क्लोरोसिस की तरफ जा रहा होगा और अगर एज दी हुई है लेस देन फोर्टी फाइव ईयर्स तो बर्जस डिजीज की तरफ जा रहा होगा ठीक है बिट्टा जी प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस ओके right so not to about claudication is this claudication pain is felt in the foot not in the foot right gold standard treatment in 35 year old lady presenting with engorged dilated tortuous veins in the right lower limb brownish discoloration of the right lower leg basically he is trying to ask what is the treatment for varicose veins gold standard treatment for varicose veins right so let me just wait yes good doctor mbbs that's really good right beta right endothermal ablation that is the right answer so every one of you is getting it right perfect maruk raj atul afsal travel right <coughs> sorry all four are used in the treatment for varicose veins but now the gold standard treatment is laser or radio frequency ablation that is endothermal ablation right okay 
the great man of India. Many a times we keep on uh, thinking about these things, the two most important life goals I would like every youth to have. One, increase the amount of time that you have at your disposal. And two, increase what you can achieve in the time available and then see the output. Uh, this reminds me of something better. When uh, at this stage, uh, many of us, when we are doing our aggressive preparation, we have a uh, common feeling that itna sara to pad raha lekin yaad nahi reh pa raha I am reading so much, but I am not able to remember it. So, beta, I would like to take three, four minutes here of you. Ki isko apan kaise improve kar sakte? Kaise koshish kar sakte, beta, isko improve karne ke? Ki hamne pada to hai, lekin yaad nahi reh pa raha hai. Abhi, there are two types of learning, beta. One is passive learning, another is active learning, right? Passive learning is, we are reading the workbook, and we feel that yes, I, I, I have learnt it, I have learnt it, I have learnt it, I have learnt it, I have learnt it. And once we are done with the workbook, we feel that we are done with the subject. Okay? This is passive learning. I repeat this in Hindi, beta. Passive learning kya hai? Humne workbook ya apne notes ko padha, padhte gai, padhte gai, padhte gai. Aur hume laga ki haan, humne isko padh liya, humne isko yaad kar liya. This is passive learning. The mistake what we are committing here is, we are not able to do any active recall. We are not able to understand whether we have learnt it or not. Ideally, beta, active learning will give us a better long-term memory. And what is active learning? We read the workbook, then we close the workbook. And then close our eyes and try to repeat that with the closed eyes. So that we are trying to recall ki achha maine ye pada tha, kya mujhe ye yaad hua? So if with closed eyes I am able to repeat it, that means yes, I am good to go. If by chance I am committing some mistakes, then I should see the workbook again, read it again, close the workbook and repeat it again with the closed eyes. Okay? Many a times, there are a lot of complicated datas which we are not able to actually learn and memorize. So that complicated data, na beta, we should make some flashcards or we can uh, um, uh, use some images or maybe flowcharts for them and just take those images or flowcharts and stick to that area maybe uh, right in front of your study table and though I should not say it but many many of us we uh, can stick in the washroom area as well right so uh, wherever we are spending little bit of time when we are away from the books we are continuously going through those flashcards or those images or those those flowcharts this is another way and also beta the job is not done here active learning we have to assess by solving the previous year questions because previous year questions, they give us a guide that what all areas are important. So when we have gone through the workbook now, we know that every day in the night, now we have to solve the MCQs. So try to pick up the MCQs from those particular topics which you have done in the day and just try to assess. Solving the previous year questions, right, that will again improve that short term memory to long term memory. That is also an active recall, right? So this is how things are going to help. And then there is a theory of repetition. Generally, beta, jo research-based analysis hai na, wo ye kehti hai ki jo hum abhi pad rahe ek ghante baad, 45% we will remember. And after one month, 21% we will remember. But how we can improve on this? is by active recall. Ye kar sakte hai. Then repetition kaise karna hai. Jo aaj humne padha, yaad kiya, active learn kiya, aur fir kal usko dobara se actively learn kiya. Aisa nahi karna hai, ki aaj apne workbook se yaad kiya, apne ko laga, apne read kiya, apne ko laga, yaad ho gaya. Aur kal fir humne usko read kiya, aur hume laga ki yaad ho gaya. Nahi betu. Yaha pe hum thoda sa galat ja rahe hai. इसको अपन थोड़ा इम्प्रूव कर सकते हैं 
एक्टिव रिकॉल करेंगे पढ़ा किताब बंद की आग बंद करके उसको बोला वो एक्टिव रिकॉल की एक्सरसाइज है यही प्रोसेस अगले दिन किया कम टाइम में और फिर कुछ दिन का गैप दे दिया पांच दिन का गैप दे दिया छह दिन का गैप दे दिया सातवें दिन दोबारा से क्विकली उसको उठाया और फिर अपन ने ऐसा किया राइट right? चलिए बेटा तो अपन कोशिश कर सकते हैं कि शायद ऐसा करने से अपनी जो मेमोरी है वो ट्वेंटी जनवरी तक उस चीज को याद रखने में हेल्प कर जाए राइट right, बेटा चलिए सो वी आर जस्ट लेफ्ट टू क्वेश्चन एंड देन वील बी साइनिंग ऑफ राइट ट्वेंटी एट ईयर ओल्ड लेक्टेडिंग फीमेल presented with red swollen and gorge right breast clinically sign of fluctuation is negative ultrasound shows scattered pus pockets in the right breast ideal treatment in this lady darna nahi hai paras beta hai na himmat karni hai koshish to karni hai koshish karne walon ki kabhi haar nahi hoti beta hai na muqaddar ne kisko kya diya ye to muqaddar ki baat hai hum koshish bhi na kare ye to galat baat hai चले बेटा और आप सब लोगों की ताकत तो बेटा दुनिया जानती है और दुनिया पहचानती है है ना आपने तो करिश्मे करके दिखाए हैं और आप फिर करिश्मा करके दिखाओगे कोशिश करेंगे माइक विल ट्राई विल ट्राई हार्ड है ना अगर अपने को लंबा खेलना है तो अपन कोशिश करेंगे राइट बेटा चलिए सो दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग अभी answers which are coming are c and d c and d dekho beta isme catch kya hua fluctuation is negative hai scattered pus pockets hai this is a case of breast abscess ab breast abscess mein basically apne ko pata hona chahiye beta jo mastitis wali story hai uh, we know that staph aureus uh, this is the commonest culprit if there are cracks in the mother's nipple to so staph aureus from the baby's mouth travel through the cracks in the mother's nipple and goes into the mother's breast and mother's breast is engorged with milk so party of staph inside the breast initially there is mastitis ruber tumor caller dollar right so uh, at this stage we give antibiotics and breast support if the party continues then small small pus pockets can develop inside the breast and at this stage apart from antibiotics we should do a ultrasound guided multiple needle aspiration from these pus pockets aspiration kar liya right if suppose there is a good amount of pus collected somewhere to agar bahut zyada pus collect ho gayi hai sign of fluctuation will be positive and then we do a ultrasound guided catheter drainage right jo yahan pe dikh raha hai अल्ट्रासाउंड गाइडेड इस तरह से कैथेटर ड्रेन कर रहे हैं अपन ओके फाइन तो आई होप यहां पे हम गलती नहीं करेंगे बेटा यहां पे देर आर स्मॉल स्मॉल मल्टीपल पस पॉकेट्स इनसाइड द ब्रेस साइन ऑफ फ्लक्चुएशन इज नेगेटिव तो मल्टीपल नीडल एस्पिरेशन वेरी गुड स्मृति दैट्स राइट ओके अगर यहां पे साइन ऑफ फ्लक्चुएशन पॉजिटिव होता अगर फ्लक्चुएशन पॉजिटिव होता और अल्ट्रासाउंड में गुड लिक्विड कलेक्शन होता एट वन प्लेस देन वी वुड हैव गॉन फॉर अल्ट्रासाउंड गाइडेड कैथेटर ड्रेनेज राइट ओके सो हियर द आंसर इज मल्टीपल नीडल एस्पिरेशन एंड देन द लास्ट क्वेश्चन विच द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट एन इंडिकेशन फॉर रिमूवल ऑफ अ सॉफ्ट टू फॉर्म टू सेंटीमीटर लंप इन द अपर आउटर कॉर्डिनेट ऑफ द लेफ्ट ब्रेस्ट लंप इज फ्रीली मोबाइल इन साइड लाइक अ ब्रेस्ट माउस ओके तो बेसिकली ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट फाइब्रो एडिनोमा अब फाइब्रो एडिनोमा जनरली दिस फाइब्रो एडिनोमा बेटा दिस इज द मोस्ट कॉमन बेनाइन ब्रेस्ट ट्यूमर और यू कैन से मोस्ट कॉमन ब्रेस्ट ट्यूमर सीन बिलो 30 इयर्स ऑफ एज यूजली बिटवीन 15 टू 25 फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ एज इट इज हाइपर प्लेजी ऑफ अ सिंगल लोब्यूल राइट इट इज क्वाइट कॉमन it is soft to firm in consistency and it is freely mobile inside the breast that is why it is called as breast mouse generally no treatment is required however sometimes we can use anti estrogens like tamoxifen or ormeloxifen right however if suppose age of the patient is more than 25 years and there is a lump inside the breast and we are doing that triple assessment crp clinical radiological and pathological and uh, we there is a suspicious cytology or suspicious histology 
इट कैन बी मेलेग्नेंसी और इफ द लम्प इज टू बिग इन साइज से मोर देन फाइव सेंटीमीटर्स विच इज कॉल्ड एज जॉइंट फाइब्रोडिनोमा और पेशेंट डज नॉट वॉन्ट इट इन साइड और देर इज अ फैमिली हिस्ट्री ऑफ ब्रेस्ट कैंसर राइट इन दीज केसेस बेसिकली जनरली वी से दैट फाइब्रोडिनोमा इज यूजली रिजोल्व बाई थर्टी ईयर्स ऑफ एज सो इफ द पेशेंट इज मोर देन थर्टी ईयर्स ऑफ एज देन ऑल्सो इट इज बेटर टू रिमूव दीज फाइब्रोडिनोमाज सो लेट सी वॉट इज नॉट एन इंडिकेशन uh to remove these fibroadenomas suspicious cytology is an indication age more than 30 years is an indication family history of breast cancer is an indication uh patient's wish is an indication agar patient chahti hai ki isko nikalna hai then also we go for it agar lump is more than 5 cm in size then also we can go for removal of these fibroadenomas so lump less than 5 cm in size is not an indication for removing the fibroadenomas that is why all of you got it right yes smriti bharat uh, rishi sunil pratisha every one of you you have really uh, supported this session very nicely and i really thank all of you beta for taking out your precious time and watching this session i just uh, uh, feel that may this uh, small session help you in approaching the different type of clinical questions on 20th of january and may this help you in uh, increasing your marks by a small bit the only thing in your control is effort that's all and that's everything so we should not think about what is going to happen we should not think about what will be our results but we should focus on the task at our hand we should focus on the efforts what we are doing okay himmat nahi harna koi negative cheez nahi sochna hai sirf ek hi baat sochna hai ki mera aaj ke din ka ye target hai agar main 100% achieve nahi bhi kar pa hu koi baat nahi agar main 50% bhi achieve kar raha hu that means main badh raha hu hai na himmat rakhna beta everyone and missed they are behind your back we keep on praying we because we believe in you you have got all the power you have got all the fire inside your belly to create miracles and to achieve big because we have seen this not once not twice but time and again time and again time and again aap sab mein wo taakat hai beta ki duniya ko apna karishma karke dikha sakte ho bas हिम्मत रखते हुए रोज रोज की रोज रोज की रोज रोज की रोज रोज की रोज कंसिस्टेंट एफर्ट्स करते जाओ थैंक यू वेरी वेरी मच फॉर योर पेशेंस एंड फॉर योर लिसनिंग वी जस्ट प्रे टू गॉड दैट मे गॉड गिव यू ऑल द स्ट्रेंथ एंड करेज टू कीप वर्किंग वेरी वेरी हार्ड विथ ऑनेस्टी डेडिकेशन कमिटमेंट एंड मे गॉड रिवॉर्ड all your hard work with great great score in the upcoming exam god bless you all thank you